وفاهكم ومجالسكم بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد ثانية يرحمكم الله ثالثة لنجل شفاعة الزهراء بأعلى أعلى أصواتكم We have spoken last night about one of the essential things that we have to do in our life to get to the success route that will lead us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is avoiding the disliked by Allah, all the actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disliked, and doing all the actions and deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes. And we all understood the method how we can reach this point of doing the good deeds and avoiding the bad actions that will lead us to, to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And eventually, if we do good, we'll be placed in the gifted place in the paradise the heaven with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and his faithful family, peace upon him and his faithful family. There are five things that we have to accomplish in regard to reach the point of committing every single action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes. First thing, we spoke about this briefly last night, but let me restate it. First thing that we have to show the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in following all of the orders that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires us to do. So, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you to respect your parents, then you do so. You respect your parents, right? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you to be knowledgeable about Al-Qur'an al azim then you or your mission is to get that knowledge from Al-Qur'an al azim So first thing is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every single saying by Him. So you don't take one part and leave the other. You take all the parts, all the tasks you are required to do, you do them. All the things you are required to avoid, you avoid them. So this is the first thing. So all of us understand what is the first thing. So there are five things to lead us to the success route that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from all of us. Do we understand the one thing that I'm talking about? All of us understand it? Good. So the second thing, to be successful in life is reading from Al-Quran al azim So we, you all, are in the, what they call it, the soft nail stage. So all of your nails are so soft. When you all grow up, your nails will get tougher and tougher, all solid. But now, your nails, all of you are soft. So from this stage, you have to develop and build up the attachment to the Al-Quran al azim so you, all of you are in the young age, in the first, what they call it, first attachment. So if you are in this stage, you have to build up this attachment to Al-Quran al azim If you build up this attachment to Al-Quran al azim then you will be successful. Why? Because the success that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in this world is in the, or inside, Al-Qur'an al azim So do we understand this part? So the following, the attachment 
to the Al-Quran from early age. Because if you do build up this attachment inside all of you, then when you grow up, like when you are kicking to the age, when you are growing to the, or through the days, you are building up this attachment because you have built it from the young age and now you have acquired it when you reach like to the 15 age, 15 years of age or 20 years of age. And what I mean by building up this attachment to Al-Quran Al-Azim is reading from Al-Quran Al-Azim every day. Every day, try to read at least, at least five phrases. At least. So reading from Al-Quran Al-Azim every day will take you to the success route. Will build the intention inside you to have this attachment with this holy book, the Quran al -Azim. And, you know, little note here by saying reading from the Quran al -Azim, is even getting the knowledge from reading all of the saying by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace upon him and his faithful family, and by his progeny. If you read the hadith or the saying of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and Ahlul Bayt, you will even get to this route. Why? Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and Ahlul Bayt are, or their saying, is the same as the Al-Quran al Do you understand this part? So taking the knowledge from both of these sources, from Al-Quran al and the saying from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Ahlul Bayt Alayhum Salam. So this is the second thing that if you do, you will be leading to the success route to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala toward the gift that you will get from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala which is paradise. The third thing is building the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How could someone build a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Could anybody tell me how could someone build a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Go ahead. Did you hear? All of you heard what he said? You didn't hear? Could you say it a little bit loud? Did you hear? By praying. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. Exactly. Following directions. Go ahead. Exactly. So all of these things will build the relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a rope between every single us in this earth and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This rope get weaker if we try to get away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And eventually we'll reach a point where it will be cut off. But it will get stronger and stronger and tougher and harder if we build up this relationship by praying. Praying, probably the fastest way, the strongest way that everybody can build up the true relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in a praying, who we talk to? Why are we are praying? Who we talk to? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We stand up between His hands and we pray. While we're praying, we are building this relationship. We are talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is He listening to us? Yes. He is listening to us. So, if we get this robe to be harder, and harder and eventually be tougher, it cannot be cut off between all of us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we reach the point that we build this great relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go ahead. Two? What happens if the rope get off or cut off? Well, if you build up this relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the soul will get stronger and stronger and tougher to the point it will not be cut off. But if you go away farther 
avoiding to build this relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this road eventually will be cut off. So how could someone avoid building up this relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Go ahead. By not praying. By not praying. By not. Go ahead. By not reading Quran. Go ahead. Exactly, by not following directions. Go ahead. Exactly. So by not following all of these things that this relationship or this road between all of us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be weak. And eventually, if you take a rope that's very strong and you hold it between the two hands and try to tear it, you will have no access to that. But if you take a really like soft rope and put it between your hands and try to pull it from you know, away from the two hands, would it be cut off? Yes, if it's weak. If it's weak, yes, it will be cut off. This is the same road between all of us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to build this relationship with Allah so this road will reach the point that nobody can cut it off. Not even ourselves. By building this relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the prayer. This is the third thing. Fourth thing is kind of considerable with this point. When do we have to pray? Exactly. So in the time of the prayer, why do we have to pray on the same time we are asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He gives us this direction to pray at these three times? Go ahead. Because um, you won't accept it any other time. You might say that. It will not be accepted through other times, but there is a stronger answer to that. Go ahead. Exactly. That when you get the gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will be in these times. Only the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to pray, to lead the prayer, or to come and try to build the relationship at these specific times. Specific times. Because we will get the greatest thawab, the greatest repay from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we pray on time. I remember my dad always tell me when I was so little in your age, he said, would you like thawab as the little bird or the biggest camel? What would you prefer? You know, a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as big as the little bird or as big as the biggest camel on earth. Which would you prefer? Exactly, the big camel. Then he said, if you want that thawab from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the biggest camel, you have to pray in time. So you keep track of praying to build this relationship and then get the biggest thawab from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing so. Go ahead. What? Well, there are some exceptions that you can pray you know, a little bit later than the specific times, if you have some excuses or some exceptions, if you are sick, you can be excused. You cannot, like, if you are really sick and you cannot, you know, like, for doing the prayer at this specific time, yes, you can be excused. You can pray a little bit later, exactly. There are some excuses, some exceptions. But we try to pray on these specific times. So we get this greatest gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we pray on time. Go ahead. Uh, what if, um, you, um, it's, it's the Salah and then um, you like sleep lay and then the time that for the Salah is Salah and it has passed and then you, when you wake up, uh, can you like, well, 
that's exactly what we have said. To restate it, you know, if you wake up late, because you went to bed late, exactly. So go to bed early, so you can wake up early. And then you will be, you know, eligible to pray on the specific times. So all of us at this young age, we go to bed early. I used when I was little as in your age. I always go to bed early so I can wake up early and then, you know, do this prayer in the specific times I was asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I get to this, you know, re build the relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praying in the specific times so I would not have any hard time when I, go, when I grow up. So I will put in the back of my mind praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trying to get this robe stronger between me and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is praying on these specific times. Yeah, go ahead. What? It's preferred to wait, you know, like for a few minutes. But if you, you know, like pray on the exact times, then you will get the greatest gift from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the bay back. So these are the things that, if we do them as we grow up, then we will be in the success route to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Then we will not fear at one day that we will get in the wrongful routes in our life because we build the greatest relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following all of the directions and orders and requirements and we know all the things that we will be punished from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we commit. We know all the good deeds or the bad deeds because we are reading the Quran. al -Azim. Every day we are building all of this relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the prayers. So all of these things, if we do them as we grow up, you know, as I said, right now, we, you, all of you have the soft nails. And as you grow up, you acquire this relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the four things. And then the fifth and last, but not lastly, will be don't lie. And you will ask me why we don't lie. Is lying a good thing or a bad thing? Go ahead. Bad thing. Why it's a bad thing? Go ahead. Exactly. So you have to be truthful. You have to be trustworthy to others. You have to avoid lying because lying is the starter of the bad deeds. Go ahead, Amir. Exactly. Exactly, I like that. That's well said by you, Amir. Did you hear all of what he said? Very good. He just took what I said and he said, if you lie, the road between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would get weaker and then eventually it will be cut off. I like that, Amir. You know, keep that in your mind. Don't forget it ever. So, who, who wants to say, I saw like, uh, uh, okay, go ahead. Exactly. 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 So what were the consequences? Exactly. I like that. You are taking what I said last night and tonight. It's very good. Go ahead. Yes, good. Go ahead. Exactly. Exactly. 
Exactly. So lying is the biggest mistake that people do or commit in their life. Why? Al Imam, I will say it, and then you will you will have the opportunity to give me some of the reasons you have. Al Imam Al Askari, peace upon him, the father of the last Imam of Ahlul Bayt. Peace upon him. Said all of the bad deeds on earth, all the bad deeds, all the bad actions, all the things that you can commit and be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were placed inside a house. And this house has this door, and this door was closed and it was locked. And do you know what was the key to this door? is the lie, telling the lie. So if you lie, you open that door and you go through this house that is full of all the bad actions, all the things that you will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you do. So lying actually is the starter of what get this robe weak and this relationship to be destroyed between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go ahead, Amir. And it's like there, when there's a house that's like good and stuff, and when you open it, you go and there's everything that's good. Exactly. That you will be praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go ahead. But if you follow the right to see your dad or your mom, then you get Exactly. That's what we said last night. Go ahead. The destroyed relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly, I like that. Go ahead. And on one bad, exactly. Good, good, good. I like that. So, do we all understood what I said? Are we all going to follow what I said? Good. Why? Because we will be in the success route that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liked and wants from all of us. Thank you for listening and I hope you will have the best life that is attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you always will be memorizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing you and watching you and hearing you for every single action that you commit in this life. For every good you will be praised, for every bad you will be punished, and I hope you will grow as those who have built the best relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from early age. We will be following the route from Rasulullah, peace upon him and his faithful family and his progeny, salawatullah wa salamu alayhim. And this is what I have said is the kind of the key, as I said, to the success route to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin.